cavalry horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. After me get water, me find dead Indian in bushes. Dead? Him murdered, stabbed him back. We'd better take a look. Come on. Him Sioux belong White Eagle's tribe. The reservation's about a mile from here. Forbidden to leave it by terms of a peace treaty. Uh, him may be brought here after him dead. You think so? Ah, uh, show your tracks. Come on. Here, two horses ride in, body dragged over ground. Here, horses go away. Back toward the reservation. We follow this trail, Kimosami? Yes, Tano. We're going to try to find out who killed this Indian and why. Anything wrong, Sergeant? Not now. I had a little trouble in Dobie Pass. Trouble? What kind of trouble? I went out there to plant some poison. Keep the animals from digging near those rifles we buried. An Indian named Standing Tree came snooping around. I don't know whether he followed me there or how much he guessed. But it doesn't matter now. Well, if you shot him, you fool, it'll be traced right back to you. Being a sergeant in the Indian police, you're the only one that can carry a weapon. I didn't shoot him. I disposed of him off the reservation. I've had so much trouble smuggling those rifles in. And everything depended on them. I guess my nerves are ragged. First time I've known you had nerves. Well, I've got him today. Sergeant, the big guns from the Empire Land Company are on my neck. They're threatening to take away the shares they gave us unless we give them some action. They can't do that. Not if they want to grab this reservation. And you know they can't until the tribe breaks the peace treaty and gets moved out. Well, that's what they're complaining about. They say that it's taking you too much time to stir up trouble. They'll have to realize this thing takes time. You tell them I had Red Moon and several other Braves lined up for an outbreak? Yes, but the big question is, will the rest of the tribe string along? Now, Chief White Eagle keeps talking peace to them. So far, he's held them in check. But I'm working on them. I know you are, Sergeant. And we'll both cash in on it. I'll be able to get away from this dirty reservation and these filthy Indians. You look down on them, don't you? And on me too, I suppose, because I'm half Indian. Oh, no. Not at all, Sergeant. I mean, after all, I've taken you into my confidence, haven't I? Yes, for your own gains. Well, we're in the same boat, Bowles. Remember that. Of course. Uh, now, what about this Indian that uh, you disposed of? Will he be missed? Not for some time. They'll think he's out trapping and fishing with the rest of the tribe. It's too bad we can't get rid of White Eagle that easily. Well, he hardly stirs away from his teepee these days. So you know, Sergeant, there's a girl over there right now painting his portrait. She came out here with a military escort from the fort with a bunch of tourists. What about her? Well, you know, Indians and pictures and their superstitions about pictures may work out very well for us. Chief White Eagle, you're very patient to sit still so long for my painting. White Eagle has learned patience. His warrior days are over. There is little to live for. You will live in his picture. All those who see it will say, there was a noble and honorable warrior. There is mighty medicine in your paintbrush, my white sister. Put this thought on my face. I wish peace for my people. I'll try my best. Ah, oh, Piaché, Piaché. Uh, who is he? Red Moon, medicine man. He say you bring evil spirits here. Please tell him I bring only goodwill. Piaché. Piaché. Hakko. Hakko. Is he angry? Yeah. He tried to stir up my people against the white man. It is 
Colonel Stacy from Fort. He is man of honor and understanding. I hope you'll understand why I'm here. Peace and help, White Eagle. Hmm. Oh, to honor this visit to White Eagle. I come to see that all is well with my red brother. All is well with me, but my young braves remain restless. That is natural, I suppose. They'll adjust themselves to the ways of peace in time. I wish peace for them. I talk peace to them. I not want them driven from this land which is theirs. Your words have great wisdom, White Eagle. And your counsel will prevail, I'm sure. Uh. And now, young lady, who are you? I'm Antoinette Carver. Tony, do my friend. I'm an artist. And a good one, judging by your work. But what I want to know is, is how did you get here? I came with a group of visitors this morning. We had a pass signed by you. Then you were supposed to leave as they did. The pass was only good for two hours. But I wanted to paint White Eagle's picture. He's so interesting. So I, uh, well, I just sort of hid out for a little while. You have violated the military law, Miss Carver. Rules, regulations, and orders. That's all you army men think about. I shouldn't care to live my life that way. Our rules are for your protection, young lady. You're on a reservation of a warlike tribe who have only recently declared peace. And I do not care to have you or anyone else complicate the situation. Can White Eagle ask favor of White Brother? What is it? White Eagle want peace on canvas. Then he sent it to Great White Father in Washington with message of peace. Your words have merit. Sergeant Paula, come here. Miss Carver, you may proceed with your portrait of White Eagle. Thank you, Colonel. But you'll be under escort. I really don't think I need an escort. I'm the best judge of that. Sergeant Paula, you'll be responsible for this young lady's safety. Yes, sir. Yeah, moccasin track. Yeah, mark of heavy boot. That would mean that a white man killed the Indian. A uh, white man would shoot, not use knife. That's possible. But he might have figured that a shot would be heard. There's something wrong here. Why Indian get off horse in first place? He may have seen something or looking. Tano, over there. Another dead coyote. Well, this makes second one we find around here. Yes, it's unusual. Not dead long. No wounds on this one either. No trap marks. Him poisoned. Poisoned? Why would anyone poison animals in this barren region? Uh, coyote tracks go here. And here. Uh, this meat poisoned. Here's where the animal was digging. There's a piece of buffalo hide he dug up. I wonder how that get buried. That's what we're going to find out, Tano. There's the reason they didn't want the coyotes digging, Tano. Rifles and ammunition. They look like 50, 60 rifles here. In good condition, too. Packed in tallow and wrapped in buffalo hides. And that's why hungry animals dig for them. I wonder how they got buried. I don't know, Tano. But the Indians surrendered their rifles to the army. These must have been smuggled in recently. Well, that's plenty hard to do, past guards. Yes, almost impossible. Unless some of the guards were in on the scheme. We think White Eagle will not know about this. I'm sure he doesn't. If he did, he'd report it to the army. Pouches not hold many bullets. Enough to cause death and destruction to troops and settlers. Disaster to the Indians. We must prevent that. And what we do? We'll put everything back and refill the hole. Then get word to White Eagle. Why you not tell Colonel Stacy? I want White Eagle to get the credit for this, not the blame. But maybe somebody dig up guns and bullets and use them. There's a way to take care of that, Tano. Remove the powder and make the bullets harmless. You sort of startled me coming in the back way, Sergeant. Running Bear said you wanted to see me. Yes. How long is this Miss Carver going to be around here? I think she'll finish White Eagle's picture today or tomorrow. And then we haven't got much time to spare. We've got to get rid of White Eagle while she's still here. Why does she have to be here? Because we need a sacrificial victim to the Indian superstition. Look, I know it's your idea that she'll be blamed by the tribe if anything happens to the chief. 
but I haven't been able to figure out how to do it. I can't kill him in broad daylight. Even the rebellious braves wouldn't stand for that. They love him. Well, you found a way to fix the animals that were digging at the rifles, didn't you? So that's what you're getting at. Well, of course, to everyone except the tribe, it'll look like a heart attack. And what if an army surgeon investigates? Once the uprising starts, there won't be any time for investigations. Afterwards, you and I will both clear out of here with our pockets full of money. Well, it's nearly time for the chief's midday meal. I'll see you later. All right. Your portrait will be finished today, White Eagle. My white sister does great honor to this chief. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. What's it? I hope they haven't been disturbing you, Miss Carver. Not at all. That's a fine picture of the chief. Thank you. Why do you keep your chief waiting for his food? Talo, can you get a message to White Eagle without being stopped and questioned? Ah, uh, me know many trails into reservation. Good. First go to town and get some supplies. Then head for the reservation. Meantime, I'll check on what the main body of the tribe is doing over at Blue River. Tell the chief I'm coming to see him tonight. Would you turn a little bit more to your right? Chief White Eagle! Are you ill? White Eagle, feel tired. Very tired. You seem to be in pain. No. Work. Paint. Make White Eagle face live on your canvas. Is your going on now? <laughs> Old chief plenty sick. Well, can't we get a doctor? Uh, keep voice low. If him die while you paid him, the Indians blame you. Why should they? Tonto, my friend. I go to land of Wonka Tonga. How him get sick? After he ate. Smell like poisoned meat. What's the matter with White Eagle? The chief is very ill, Sergeant Paula. Send for the army surgeon. Him dead. Dead? Red Moon, take the chief's body inside. Sergeant, you better get girl to Fort Ponto. You don't belong to this tribe. Who are you? Me old friend of Chief White Eagle. How did you get on the reservation? Just ride in to see Chief. And after you got here, the Chief died. The Chief got sick before that, Sergeant. We think he was poisoned. Poisoned? That's impossible. I think you're both imagining things. However, it's my duty to hold you for investigation. Running Bear, Big Fish, take this stray Indian to jail. Don't let him get away. Hear me, my brothers. The white squaw killed your chief. She drew his spirit from his body and put it in her picture. Paula talked truth. This Wendigo make bad medicine for our chief. She must die. No! No, let me go! 
Take a red moon, but do nothing until you dig up the rifles. Take them to the tribe at Blue River. Then you can kill the soldiers who will follow you. Our brother is wise. We will get rifles and make war medicine while White Squaw pays for her evil work. Hako, Hako. No, no, let go of it. Scout. Tallow's knife. There are more satisfying things than money balls. Uh, what, for instance? Seeing those who have looked down on you in trouble. Seeing the terror in their eyes. The fear of death in their faces. I'll still take money. You better be getting on over at the fort and tell them that the Indians are on the warpath. There's no rush. We want to give them plenty of time to get the rifles distributed. In the meantime, we have this stray Indian on our hands. Yeah, he does present a problem, since he and the girl saw so much. The Indians will take care of her. But right now, we'll take care of him. Let him out. Let him out? Why? Listen, he's going to try to escape. He'll attack me with this knife. And I'll be forced to shoot him. Oh, that's a very convincing story for the Colonel, Sergeant. Escape now, Sergeant. Shoot him. Hold it. Drop your guns. A masked man. How much did you hear? More than enough to hang you both. You remember me, don't you, Bowles? Yes, back in Green Valley. You turned the man I was working for over to the sheriff. He got out of jail a year ago and formed the Empire Land Company. You know that, too. I keep track of such things. Tato, get their guns. Thanks, Red Moon. We got us out of a tight spot. White Squaw been taking the Dobie Pass. I go there now to avenge White Eagle's death. Make haste, Red Moon. Get the rifles to the rest of the tribe without delay. Shall be done. You know, Sergeant, I've always wanted to see the face behind that mask. Go ahead, then. Unmask him. I am. Then I'm going to fill him full of lead. Girl for death of chief. We've got to save the girl and keep the Indians from going on the warpath. We'll lock these two in the cell and get there in a hurry. First, let's tie and gag these two. Hear me talk. Have no fear of the soldiers. Their bullets cannot hit you. Yours cannot miss. This will be reward for killing White Squaw, whose medicine brought death to White Eagle. Go, get blood. Hako! Go! Oh, Kanish Kana! Kiwa Tanishi Tako! Yeah, Kia Inish Jill! Red Moon, I've come for the white girl. Who talked to Red Moon while hiding his face? Your great chief knew me as a friend. In an hour of need, I served him. Now your people need my help again. I hear a crooked tongue. You and that engine are scouts for soldiers, our enemies. Remember my words. Their bullets cannot hit you. Yours cannot miss. Shoot! Kill! The guns are useless against us. They will not fire because you're led by an evil spirit. Look, we fold our arms. Shoot more! My red brothers, your rifles cannot harm us. Throw them down. No, no! 
The spirit of White Eagle commands it. Go now. Tell your people what you have seen. Tell them the word of White Eagle. Tell them to keep peace so white man's magic and justice will be on their side. Wasi! I want to thank you for stopping the Indian uprising. I wouldn't call it an uprising, Colonel. No, what would you call it taking up arms? They voluntarily abandoned their rifles. No hostile act was committed against the army. That's true. They were victimized by the dishonesty of Bowles and Sergeant Powell. But I'll see that they pay for the outbreak and not the Indians. That gives me great satisfaction, sir. Goodbye, Miss Carver. Goodbye. Adios, Colonel. Goodbye. Well, young lady, you got more excitement than you bargained for. Indeed, I did. And, Colonel, I have much more respect for military regulation. Well, I'm glad you learned your lesson without too great a cost, Miss Carver. There's one thing I still don't understand. Why didn't the Indians' guns work against the masked man? He told me why. After he and Tonto found the rifles, they made the ammunition useless by removing the powder. So that's it. And the Indians thought it was white man's magic. Yes, but I call it excellent generalship. I'd love to paint that masked man's portrait, Colonel. Do you think it could be arranged? I doubt it. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. Hello, Silver! Hello! 